Hi, in this video I'm looking at doing an addition of two vectors where one vector is the vector A which is 12 235 degrees and the other one is B which is the vector 18 169 degrees. So I've got these two vectors and I want to add them together and find the resulting vector. So to do this, I'm going to start with vector, draw a vector A, and then off of it, draw vector B. Or I could do it the other way around. It doesn't make any difference. So vector A, if I want to draw a small Cartesian axis so that I can get the angle right. So I'm going to start from here. So this is my starting point. And I want to find an angle of 235. Now, if that's 90, 180, 270, 235 is going to be somewhere in here. So it means we're going to be coming somewhere down there. So that'll be our angle of 235 degrees. And so then vector A is going to come down there and it's got a magnitude of 12. We'll then put in vector B. So I'm going to put in another Cartesian coordinate cross here so that way I can start B from here and it's an angle of 169 so it's 90 plus a bit so it's going over this way because this is an angle of 169 degrees and, and vector B is a bit longer than vector A so we'll go to there and it's 18 magnitude and I want to find the resulting vector. So I want to know from my start to my end, if that was a straight line, what is the magnitude of this vector and what is its angle? So that way I have it as I described as a complete vector. Now, if I was going to, to draw this as its own separate triangle, uh, so that that way I can apply my triangle mass, I would basically be having a line which is 12 and a line which is 18 and another line which is unknown. And that's my R. Now, in this case, this is not a right angle, even though it kind of looks like one, that's just my poor drawing skills. In this case, I have two out of the three sides, but I don't have any angles on the inside because this is an angle from here around to here, and this is an angle from here around to the blue line. So I don't have any angles on the inside of my triangle. But I do have a few things that I can use. One trick that we can use is I can extend out any horizontal and vertical lines and if I do that, I can see here, I've got a angle rule that we can use because I've got what looks like a Z. So this would be our Z rule where this angle would be the same as projecting off of that horizontal. I'm not projecting off the green line R there, that angle. These two are the same. And the reason this helps me when I'm looking at this is I can, I need to know this, if I find out this angle, I can subtract it from 169 and I can find out this internal angle here in my triangle. But there's no information I can use to find this angle, but there is information I can use to find its alternate version up here, which I can find by doing the 235 and minusing off the 180 and that'll give me that angle. So I'm going to start there. 235 degrees, whoops, let's actually make this be the right numbers, 235 degrees, if I call this angle alpha, minus 180 degrees will give me an angle of 55 degrees. And then to get this internal angle, which if I start doing some labeling, well, that'll be the angle R to side R, because it'll be angle R to side R. So angle R will be 169 minus 55, 
which leaves us 114 degrees. So this angle in here is 114 degrees. So sometimes it can take a little bit of using our parallel lines angle rules to give us some angles. So now that I've got this angle in here being 114 degrees, I can use my triangle rules to help me. And the first one I can use is the cosine rule to help us get the magnitude of R. So if I want to get the magnitude of R, I can use our cosine rule, R squared equals A squared, where this is A and this is B, plus B squared minus 2AB cosine angle R. And so I can get 12 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 12 times 18 cos 114. So that's going to give us an R, well an R squared I should say, of 643.71 and then square rooting that we get an r to be 25.37 whatever units we're working in so now i have the length of this line i now need its bearing so if i go back to my diagram in fact i might quickly re-sketch my diagram because it's a little bit it's gotten a little messy so we have one vector coming down here we then have another vector coming up here and then we've got this resulting vector coming down there. So I need to know this angle here because that would be the angle for my resulting vector back from our initial starting origin. And to find this, that would mean that, well, if I knew this angle in here change it to this color so if i knew this angle in here because i know the angle from here around to this line we were told that in our question basically i can then subtract this little bit from this little bit and it'll give us the bit we're after so i want to try and find in our diagram up here this angle up here that's the angle i'm trying to find which would be angle b so we want to find angle B to help us. And to do that, I'm going to use the sine rule. So we're going to have sine of angle R, or little r, equals sine of angle B on little b. And putting our numbers into this rule, that's going to give us sine of angle R, which was 114 degrees, on little r, we just worked that out, 25.37. On sine b, which we don't know, we're trying to work out. On little b, which was 18. So sine b is 18 sine 114 on 25.37, which gives us <clears throat> 0 0.64. Five, six, four, eight, and therefore B will be the inverse sine of 0 0.65, which gives us an angle of 40.4002 degrees. So 40.4 degrees. So now we know our angle, we know, but we know this angle, this one in here. So now if I do our bigger angle, which was the 235, we can get, because this was 235, I can do 235, which is around here, back off by this much, and I'll have the result we're after. So that gives us our final angle. So our angle in this case is going to be 235 degrees minus of our 40.4 degrees which gives us 
an angle of 194.5997 degrees, so 194.6 degrees. And so therefore our resulting vector R has a magnitude of 25.37 and an angle of 194.6 degrees and we have our answer. So some vector problems are not quite so easy. If I wanted to add these two vectors together and get the resulting vector, I've got to have a look at what is happening in terms of the overall triangle, but also of all the different little angles that are happening within the problem, because what they are up to can help us, such as using our parallel line rules, or just inspecting what's happening within our triangle to try and figure out what we have, what we need, and then of course our triangle rules will usually make a presentation as well.